Good day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here and today we've got our special guest in our inaugural first interview which is Mr. Simon Dutton. How are you going Simon? Hi Matt, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good thanks, good thanks. Excellent. Um, yeah, we, just a bit of background, we initially met doing the House of Dots back in January this year and yeah. you were talking at that stage we found out about serious play which at the time I had no idea what that was. Um, so I thought it'd be a good chance to get you in and have a, a bit of a chat about that so you can uh, let others know all about the, the goodness that is serious play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's really good fun. And um, whilst it is play, it is serious. So um, I got into it about five years ago. Um, I worked in project management for a long time and would run workshops and you'd facilitate um, business requirements and all sorts of things and at the end of a project uh, there was a review to see how it went. So I was fairly familiar with facilitation as a, as a thing but wanted something different to add to my CV, perhaps something that would distinguish me that other people didn't have. And I found serious and at the end of 2015 I got onto a course in Copenhagen with two of the guys that um, helped develop it within the Lego group because it started as a Lego thing. Um, there are a couple of other professors around the world who got involved, but um, <clears throat> it, it developed within Lego. And these two guys, Robert Rasmussen and Per Christensen, um, took the, the core of what uh, Lego Series Play was and developed it into uh, the methodology that it is today. Okay. So um, I got the advantage of them running what they call their double course uh, where the two of them train together so normally you'd get one trainer and 12 people uh, we got two trainers 24 people and and got the best of both of them so i was in copenhagen for a week uh, we trained for four very long days and i had a couple of days at the end just for a bit of r and r before christmas and a great place to go christmas shopping as well you can find lego there for example <laughs> um, and I've been running workshops with it uh, ever since. So what is Lego Serious Play? I, it's one of those questions you get asked, uh, and you know, what do you do? I do Lego Serious Play. And people say, oh yeah, I've done that. Um, we did a team building workshop and we had to build a bridge or something. Well, that isn't Lego Serious Play. That's, um, that's team building with Lego bricks. Lego Serious Play is something much more complex but is incredibly simple. It comes with um, four key parts. The first one is, I ask a question. Everybody in the workshop builds. Everybody in the workshop then explains and talks about their model, and everybody then reflects on, on what's been said. So everybody gets the model, everybody gets to talk about what, they, what they've done, because I don't know about you, Matt, and I'm sure it's a lot of people who have been in business, have been in meetings where, I'm going to start pointing now, the person over there uh, in the corner of the room knows all the answers, so why should I bother saying anything? Or the person on the flip chart with the pen um, has already determined what the, the solution is going to be. And there are some people who just don't say anything either because they feel that uh, their voice won't get heard or they think their idea is silly. Lego yeah, series play. Yeah, I mean, in those, yeah, certainly been in those yeah. situations where it, it's either a predetermined outcome or, yeah, you get a dominating personality or anything of those sorts of things. And it's, yeah, you sit back there and at the end of it, it's like, well, you know, why do we need to spend a day, four days or whatever it is yeah. to, to p come up with your outcome that you already had predetermined? That's absolutely right. And I've been in lots of those uh, meetings as a delegate and, and felt that, that they are bad meetings to be in. So Lego Serious Play brings a democracy to the meeting because it gives everybody an equal voice. Yep. And uh, I ran um, a workshop for a leading bank um, last year and the project team was having a problem with communication and people weren't getting to hear uh, what was going on in other parts of the project, things that maybe would interest them, uh, things that were important to them. Uh, and then, of course, there were things that were, were, were not, not frivolous, 
but um, less important to, to certain people. But the key was that the, the people weren't getting their important bits across. So we were going to have a workshop, and there was somebody who couldn't attend the workshop, and he emailed me with his thoughts of what we should do to improve communication. And the list that came was a list of things that you saw across the whole of the business. So we should have um, a newsletter. We should have stand-up meetings. Um, and he came up with about half a dozen different ideas. None of them were new. So we ran this workshop. It was only for two hours. And we asked two questions. The first one was, um, what sort of communication do you want to receive? And the other question was, how do you want to receive those communications? Now, I've got here, this is a representation of one of the models that the person built. And it's a very, really simple model. Um, he put this together in a couple of minutes. He picked up some bricks. And um, we always talk about thinking with your hands. Because when you think with your hands, you think in a very, very different way. Yeah. And when he came to explain it, it was really simple. And it is something that nobody else had come up with. He said, there's three levels here. This first level is um, sort of the headline of, of what I need. So, um, and that will tell me whether I want to get into the rest of this, this item. And then the next piece is probably a paragraph. And that gives me the bare bones then of what this thing is about. And then the third level is, is lots and lots of detail. And I say, I can look through this window and I can look down, I can see there's three levels, I can read the headline, it doesn't interest me, I'll move on. Um, I can look through the window, I can read the headline, yeah, that's, that's interesting, I'll just read the next paragraph. Or I can look through the window, um, I read the headline, I think, yeah, that's, Without that, I can't do my job. I'll read all I need to know about it. And that we started to um, produce information at three, three levels. The headline, the paragraph, and the detail. And we, someone else built a model of a conveyor belt. And you can now imagine all these pieces of information coming down on a conveyor belt. And you can read the headline and pick the ones you want. And, and then determine whether you want to go any further. And we put this at the top of the screen and they just rotated around the top of the screen uh, as, as they came on screen. And you could then choose whether you wanted to do the headline and if it wasn't interesting to you, reject the rest of it and move on and then the next one would come down. And we implemented that and communication went up uh, considerably. People were now understanding. Um, just for those two hours, a few bricks, a new new concept of, of how people wanted to receive communications. So that's that was one example. Um, so yeah. it, just to get a bit of a sense of what it's like to be in the room, so you've got the two hours, you, you've got a broad outline in terms of, okay, it's about communication. How do you present that to the, the delegates? Do you just sort of say, okay, right, we've got 20 minutes, these are the broad parameters? How, how would that? So, uh, we would probably have spent the first 40 minutes of that workshop um, understanding LEGO Serious Play. So what we would do is get them to get the black plate and typically we'd ask them to build a tower and we would ask them to finish their tower with a flag. Um, and then we ask them to talk about it. So, and it, it, it gets them into, I can build, I can put bricks together because not everybody has used Lego bricks for, for a long time. Yeah. Um, I can talk about it. And if necessary, I can answer questions about it. And depending on the length of the workshop, we make this a very, very simple exercise or a more complex exercise. And in democracy of the meeting everybody gets a bag like this which is a standard uh, bag of lego bricks they're all the same so everybody gets the same starting point and 
there's 42 bricks in here that they are very, very carefully chosen. They are specifically for Lego series play. Um, and we get them to, to use these to, to do the first piece. And depending on how complex um, a workshop it is, we, we then introduce many more bricks as well. But that, that is called the Windows Exploration Bag, and it's sort of always the starting point for, for a workshop. Okay, so you spend sort of with that one, the first 40 minutes sort of giving them a bit of a design language and a, a framework to be able to present ideas and develop them. It's, it's important that everybody understands the etiquette and people get it quickly. Who at first think um, we're messing around with Lego bricks when people use things like this and produce it very quickly that, um, that the workshop takes off. And a typical outcome is people saying, wow, I didn't know I could do that, or that was impressive. Um, and people talk about it for days afterwards. Do you, and how do you think that gets drawn out? Is that because when you put the bricks in front of them, you're forcing them to think and communicate in a different way, which then removes any sort of, I guess, organizational structures? Or how, how do you think that? Yeah, there's no hierarchy. Um, and it works at all levels. And if you've got a workshop where you've got, say, a managing director and somebody from whatever the shop floor is, um, they're all talking the same language. They're talking Lego bricks. And this person saw this, this brick here as a window. Um, somebody else might have used it um, and given it a different meaning. But whatever meaning that person gave it, that's what it meant. Um, so I'll, I'll show you another model where, um, I, where I, I talked about this flag yep. and the person that used the flag gave it a very, very different meaning. Okay. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a moment. Yeah, just, just before, if we can just sort of uh, going with this, just to sort of understanding a bit of the end-to-end -end process. Um, so you did the first 40 minutes doing the flag, they then had the chance to develop the one that you have in your hand there. And yep. then uh, over, uh, over how long did they have to sort of do that? So we only give them, I don't know, five, ten minutes, depending on how complex things are and how many bricks are in front of them, to, to actually build. And then everybody gets two or three minutes to, to talk about their model. And we talk through the model. Yep. So um, I, I then explained it about being three levels and so on. And if you've got a question, you don't ask it of me. You ask it of the model. So, um, you know, why is this green? Well, it's not, it's just, a, just because I picked up green bricks. It, that has no meaning. Rather than, why did you think that sort of question? It's, it's, it's about the model. Yeah. Uh, and once you make it about the model, you've depersonalized um, yeah. everything there is. So I'm, I'm now sat behind this to explain it. But what you say is this, not me. And what you hear is, is, is that's, that's why it's democratic. And once you start picking bricks up and putting them together, um, and, and, and I think anybody who has children uh, and, and a bucket of Lego bricks will come up with some fantastic things. Um, I have, uh, I know a child who, uh, at the age of maybe four, um, discovered my bucket of Lego bricks and put some together. And when asked what she'd built, it was a machine that made things disappear. And it's part of the imagination that yeah. you can, you can, you know, th this, if I was to explain it in a different way, is this is the machine for making things that disappear and you go up the steps and through the window and, and you're gone. Uh, so you can give the bricks different meanings according to, to, to what you're thinking. Yeah, what initially Does that was, make sense? yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, very much we have uh, kids and, and that's the sort of thing. They'll, they'll build something and you'll, you'll then start asking them what it's about. And usually you get that whole sort of narrative behind it, which then contextualizes it very much like what you said, depending upon your, the narrative that got it can mean one thing or it can mean something else. And it's seeing that imagination coming through and out. Yeah. So everybody gets to build and we can 
these are called individual models because they've been built individually. People, we never get people to build together. It, it always has to be an individual's thought. But what we can then do is put these out on the table and, and start to group them together. So you would have different ideas grouped together. Um, and you can make connections between ideas and then we can develop it even further and build a landscape. And we could, we could then take this and develop a whole communication system for, for, the, for the team. Yeah, so good. rather than this for ideas, we, we could take it even further. But we only had a couple of hours. Hours to do it. So you've got to go through and that. Yeah. So because I think you were saying before you were combining that with then the, somebody else did a conveyor, conveyor belt. So then you're seeing it come through. And and is that how does that sort of process work in terms of, okay, you know, everybody's done their own little models. They've explained them. How do you sort of then start grouping them or how does that dynamic work? Uh, we would group them based on um, similar concepts. So... Um, this was about the three levels of communication. Um, if there was anything else about that sort of thing within the communication, we would put them together uh, and, and, um, and you can use that to develop those ideas a uh, little bit further. And with that, if, if there's any sort of disagreement or, you know, if, if somebody starts to say, no, I think those three should be together and that, or how do you sort of manage that sort of process? Well, we have a debate and in most instances you'll get people to agree that they will see someone else's view and if they can't you ask the question can you live with that yep. and you know you can agree not to agree but it's it's not worth the argument yeah yeah you, you one of those things of just picking your battles over the key things Okay, so you've got yes. the groupings, yep. you start connecting ideas and that, and say for this workshop, which was only a short one, what do you then try to do as sort of like a, a takeaway or an action point or what's sort of the next stage to make sure that you, you know, they don't walk out of two hours and go, yeah, that was fine, yeah, back to normal, yep. forget. So um, I, we took all the models away and we made them a feature in the office. So... Um, everything got placed on the desk for people to look at and there were notes around it of, of what all these things meant so people could understand and you would see uh, people who have been in the workshop explaining to other people what this meant um, we got back together a couple of days later and agreed um, which ideas we were going to take forward nothing got thrown away but there were some ideas that we would would effectively be quick wins that we could implement very quickly. And we took those to senior management and said, we've run a Lego Serious Play workshop. This is what we think we should do. What do you think? And we got signed off straight away. And a week later, we were implementing um, new communications. Okay. And is that... Is that sort of typical once you've sort of done the workshop and you've been able to present the ideas that you get that sort of uh, immediate sign off or is there some sort of pushback against it or is it sort I, of I think it depends if there's going to be spend uh, and these this sort of thing can be done very very cheaply <laughs> uh, and the, I suppose you could say they're new and radical ideas but they're really simple ideas that you can you can implement so quickly um i've done other workshops uh, with bringing teams together where we spend a whole day so rather than a couple of hours a whole day and developing what the the ethic and of the team is and, and how the team wants to operate um and again the team then take that away and 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 develop it and i've done workshops um about customer service and we build a model that is much, much bigger than this. So we, we based on a number of elements of their business and we group them together and then we connect them together. And you can see the interaction uh, of, um, of what those things mean. Uh, and if we flip up now, I'll show you a photograph. And you can see how... Um, all these things connect and you can then play uh, out scenarios. So for example, if this is part of a call center and call volumes go up, then what does that mean? And at some point, this flexible connection 
um, it's sort of this sort of thing that can bend, you can connect pieces together, or um, a sort of string connection. When you I'm going to put bits together here, if, if you imagine this is a call center and this is call volumes, then when this flexible connection is, is slack, um, you can see that there isn't a problem. But as call volumes begin to rise, then this becomes more taut, and at some point it will get so there's no more slack in it, and it will tug on the on the call center. And it's when you get this sort of thing, when things start to play out, that you can uh, play scenarios within your business um, and work out then what you're going to do if if this happens, and you can. Um, have this huge model of, of, of your business um, and all the things that interact with it, all the agents that go around it, that um, will, you can then prioritize which are the key elements for your business that you, you want to focus on. But you build the model of the business. Um, and it could be that someone else has built that of calls the web or part of the business and if they are doing the same you have another one and a connection um, where I click that on and that is then a solid connection there's no movement in that one so as soon as that starts to tug there's no slack yeah. um, and if both of them happen at the same time then then you've got a problem within your business so you can you can build models of of um, of way things operate, and 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 play out the scenarios. And you think, like for this, when you go through and you build out those different models, are you then able to sort of really prioritize where the key issues are, or how does um, how do people able to identify? You know, I guess the the signal from the noise aspect. Yeah, you you, you end up um, building this huge thing. And as I say, uh, you can, we'll have some photographs that you can put up on screen. You build this huge thing and you can then play these scenarios. But, but be, because you've got lots of people in the room from different parts of the business, so you, you might have salespeople, um, marketing people, uh, the people at the back end that design the product, the people that build the product, whatever that might be whether it's um, a financial product or a physical product, for example, um, you, you can play out these things where one side is completely oblivious of what else is happening. Yeah, yeah. The, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Yeah. And that's assuming the left hand knows what the left hand is doing. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've been in, in, in some places I've worked, uh, I've, I've said, you know, the, it's sort of like one finger doesn't know what... what the next thing is doing next to it. So yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. even more siloed in that, that manner. Yeah. And do you find because you are taking potentially abstract ideas and putting them into bricks, does that sort of really help people within various parts of the business to see it more clearly or provide clarity? Yes, it does. Yeah. I think once you've got a 3d model in front of you, rather than some words on a piece of paper, on a flip chart um, you can see it you can visualize it um, you could effectively poke it and prod it there and then because um, I can explain this much more easily yeah in in, 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 in 3d uh, it is it really is that um, pictures paint a thousand words and um, it sounds like a cliche but you, you can see what this person is trying to get across very very simply yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's um, certainly having a bit of an artistic bent. It's like if you can draw a picture and you can, you know, even for just basic prototypes or anything like that, it just, you know, what when you're communicating verbally, what you might mean and what yeah. somebody else interprets that to be can be two completely different things. Yeah. And with this, you don't need to be artistic. Yes. So you, as long as you can put some bricks together, uh, then, uh, then you, you you can do the workshop. Okay. Um, did you have any other examples there? I've got another one, and I say this one uses the flags. Um, this was from a university and a team of scientists, 
and there are about 30 of them and they all work for the same professor and they had their away day and although they worked for the same professor they all worked on different things there were a couple of people that worked on the same thing but everybody else was doing individual research projects um i don't know if you can work out what this is um potentially some sort of boat uh potentially it could be but it's not no yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this this scientist was doing a study about the effects of smoking on pregnancy and fertilization okay so <laughs> she was able to talk about um these things and and the cigarette and the effects that it would have and then the fertilization of the egg mm -hmm. so it um it again just became a very very simple representation of of the work she was doing yeah uh, to be able to explain it in a partly in a fun way um but very doing very serious things and we we spent half a day um of people just building models of their work and then then explaining to the others and again uh we left the models with them um photographed them wrote them up and 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 took the models back to the university where they um became a centerpiece within the the department for people to understand what everybody else was doing yep so and do you find with the the bricks and those sorts of examples where you are dealing with <clears throat> academics and that that the bricks then start you know stripping away all the jargon and things which is so easy for specialists to fall into and but by doing that then the next person doesn't have a clue what they're talking about yeah yeah it 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 really is a a, a very simple depiction of what they're doing and and everybody who, who saw the model could understand <clears throat> um, what they were doing and they could explain you know the process um, and the key elements and and what the outcomes were so far and and how they were doing it simply through let's see that is five seven eight eleven bricks there, I think count that correctly yeah just something really simple so with that what was originally this sort of objective that they were trying to achieve with the workshop that you did um that there were as I say 30 in the team and nobody had a clue what anybody else was doing okay. and it was just, it was bringing the team together so and again rather than doing a powerpoint presentation and a half a dozen slides build it see it explain it and then um take that away and put it on your desk and do you did you sort of see as people were doing that whether there was sort of like some between people aha moments or sort of like oh okay you know i okay now i understand what you're doing actually you know you might want to consider this or talk to that person or any um yes there was um there was a person within the department who was responsible for tech so they were they would do lots of studies um with people that they would pull in off the street in a very selective way. And the guy that did tech was doing wearables and picked up two or three instances when people were doing their explaining how he could then help them with their research by automating um, data collection, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, no, <clears throat> which would then have tremendous benefits downstream because if you're able to get data really quickly and process it, um and, and yeah when you see tech people that's what they think of it's like oh how can i you know write scripts or software to to do that automatically which is what computers are good at doing massive volumes of data and doing stuff with it yeah so so that's that's the sort of thing it can bring out i say we we, we start with the bag like this um then move on to a box like that so that's got 219 in pieces, pieces in it yep um yeah um this would probably be enough bricks in here for a half day workshop 
uh, maybe a day. Yep. And then we have a couple of other kits, uh, which is uh, one's called a landscape kit, and one's called the connections kit, like this that brings everything together. Um, and they've got three or four thousand bricks in. And they all get shared, and um, and we build super super models. The only downside is uh, is bring them all back home. <laughs> that's the thing if, if you've got them sitting there on people's desks and things like that then uh, uh they, they might not easily yeah, come back that's the bonus yeah 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 and i think you know before this you provided me uh the link to where you can purchase it off uh, the lego website which i'll include in the show notes for this and um looking at the sets i mean just yeah generically do reviews and things like that you sort of look at it and the uh, price to part ratio is relatively high as well on those. Yeah, yeah. But you get, if you look at what's in the boxes, um, the, the landscape kit includes some very nice Duplo animals and there's some fairly expensive parts in there and base plates and so okay. on. Um, and, and some unusual parts as well, which um, I think generally had gone out of production but have been retained for serious play. Oh wow! Okay then, so might have to uh, check out those kits and see what bits are actually in them. <laughs> Did you have any other examples that you wanted to run through? No, I think just those two. Otherwise, um, it, I, I I could show lots and lots of examples, but but um, yep. I think it gives you the the, the idea of. Um, uh, how it works right. and yeah being able to bring out ideas and as you're saying the democratization within the meeting and you know getting rid of those silos and organizational structures when i when i talk about serious play and try and explain it um the, the thing i i add is the only way to really understand it is to try it uh and i'm not always happy to go out and do a, an hour's demo and once people have have been through that they get it and then it will be a number of months probably before they come back and, and say yeah can you come and do us a workshop but you it, and t until you've tried it and you've put some bricks together then um, you don't get it fully to just un understand the demo i've got uh, explains that yeah yeah and uh, yeah. Uh, as you sort of say by the time uh, people go through and yeah it it has to go through an organizational structure and get spend approved against it and things that can, yeah, take some time yeah. to do. Yep. Yep. Okay. Then in a normal, uh, instance, if, if this is a, a triangle of, of what, what, you know, then maybe the top 10% is the stuff that is at the front of your, your mind. And that's the stuff that comes up. Um, straight away if you start thinking with your hands and and start building um, you tap into three imaginations and you can bring out maybe another 80 90 percent of, of of what you know um, and and that's what the, the methodology does that's part of it um, it also brings out something called the, th the three imaginations so um i'm going to think uh, i've got a, a mobile phone here imagine this was a nokia 3310 yep and it's interesting to know that nokia didn't start out as a mobile phone business they were a wood mill yeah i mean they've been around for like uh, 100 years or something how, how how on earth you go from, yeah but how do you go from doing things with wood to um, turning out mobile phones. But if this was a 3310, that's what it does. It makes telephone calls and it receives telephone calls. You might be able to play Snake on it, but that's about it. So that's your first imagination. I can imagine what a 3310 is. My second imagination is what else can I use this for? Well, it's a fairly heavy thing. I could use it as a paperweight and it'll hold things down. And then there's the third imagination, which is what else can I do with it? What else can I make this thing do? Do well, I can add a camera to it, and I can now use it to take photographs as well. And so it's repurposing the the object, and that's in part um, what we can do with with a Lego Series Play Workshop. One of the exercises I sometimes do is ask people 
to um, put some bricks together, you, only 10 bricks, uh, anything they like. And then I tell them what it is that they've got to describe. So if we go back to, the, well, I'm going to do this one. And you looked at this one, and to you, that was a boat. And if this model was in your hand, you could describe this as a boat. And it would be perfectly correct. That's good to know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is your model. Uh, you've given these bricks meaning. That's what they mean. So um, in, in, in Lego world, um, the model is always right. And then, of course, the person behind it is, is as well. Yeah. So th that's some of the, the intellectual background behind it. Uh, one of the things I said right at the beginning, it's, it's not building a bridge and seeing how strong it is. It is developing um, things that really will, will exist and, can be, and you can understand and work through. And with that, how are you now finding... Um, you know, being able to approach businesses or how do people sort of find out about what you're doing and, you know, going, Hey, let's give that a try. Or do you find you're met with a lot of skepticism initially or what's that? Um, I think there, there is a lot of skepticism. People are afraid to try it. Um, I, one of the people I trained with who is in Switzerland, it works in the pharma industry. Um, a year or so back gave me a call and said, are you free to come and help with the workshop? Um, and yeah, I'd love to. He, he's got a client who um, had launched a new um, pharma product and it wasn't, wasn't getting out there. And of course, pharmaceuticals, you invest millions in yeah. to bring them to market. And it's really important that <laughs> they it gets out there. Investment. Yeah. Um, and he said, well, I think we could investigate this with Lego Serious Play. And he and I talked about it. And um, without, without going into any of the confidential side, um, we, we talked about how we could put a workshop together that would um, understand why the, the product was having problems. And you could then build this model of, of all the, the things that surround it. Um, and then you can play what ifs and, and generate scenarios and determine what you would then do to fix it. And we presented this and the company then changed their minds. They know we need to do this in the traditional way yeah. and uh, they backed off. Um, we felt we could have brought um, solutions. You know, they, they would have top 10% of solutions. We would have gone deeper with, 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 with Lego bricks. And it, it's one of those things you win some, you lose some. It's people who are prepared to, to give it a try. And, and often when people have, then um, they understand it and, uh, and, th and they'll come back for more. Often uh, I find that you, you talk to people today and you explain about how the process works, what it can do, but um, you might not get anything from it for, for maybe six months. Yeah, I suppose when it is something which sits outside of, oh, not that it sits outside of, but when it's not the conventional way of seeing to be dealing with business problems and trying to come up with solutions. You know, people want to default to the, the norm because, you know, internal right. politics within companies can sometimes be, well, you know, you're sticking your neck out, you know, why don't, how is this, you know, it's got to be justified relative to standard methodologies. It's like, well, you know, why are we not doing X, Y, and Z that we know we've done for years and years and years and it's, it's work, but it hasn't worked, which is why we're asking this question. Like, <laughs> It, it is that same old, same old, isn't it? Um, if you keep doing things the same way, um, then you won't come up with anything new. There's that picture of um, the guy pulling the, the trolley with um, square wheels. And there's somebody coming up behind him saying, hey, we've got one of these. And this person's saying, sorry, I'm too busy. And it's it it can be that sort of um, that sort of thing. 
people just want to, uh, at the end of the day, if there's a politics involved in it, they just need to be safe that they made the right decision and, yeah, all the stuff which goes yeah. along that, which, yeah, you, you made the right decision, but it doesn't advance the organisation further. Yeah. Did you make the best decision? Yeah. Is part of it. Um, and maybe you'll never know because you haven't unearthed this level of thinking. Yeah, my understanding it all being yeah open to to something else. So I think um, I've seen it somewhere. It's that that fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Yeah, and who wants the uh, your senior manager to walk into a room and you've got a table full of Lego bricks? Yeah, the, the kids' toy. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that maybe is a serious place. You have like uh, you know twenty five plus on the the age category on the box. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great methodology. It's, it, I find it remarkably rewarding. Um, at the end of a workshop, and people say, "I didn't know that. I didn't know I could do that. Um, I don't know where those ideas came from." Um, it was hard work, but it was refreshing. Uh, I did um, a team build workshop in again a different financial company, and people saying it's the best team build they've ever had. They, they really got together as a team because they could understand what everybody else was doing because there's a 3D model, and uh, they could build models of where they wanted to be. So, and we asked different questions um, with one team. We said, imagine it's a year's time and you've just won the award for team of the year. Um, what did you do to achieve it? And people then build models of what they're going to do um, on an individual basis to get this this award. And, and you've now got a plan that you can work to. Yeah. You got some some uh, plans some goals you've broken down you know the usual sort of uh, smart goals and things is there anything else on the serious play that you want to cover off no i think that uh, that's a reasonable explanation um as i say if if you want to see it in action then you need you need to give it a taste um and and then you'll be amazed Yep. And around this video or the show in the show notes, we'll have all your contact details listed there. Um, but just as a, a preview, what's, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Uh, there's a website, uh, which is DBTI, uh, Delta Bravo Tango India, uh, .co .uk. So there's that there's uh, contact details on the website. There's a, a brief explanation of, of, of what we do. Um, yeah, that's probably the, the starting point. And, and then either drop me an email from there or use the contact form. Okay, great. Excellent. Yeah, and yeah. around around this video or in the show notes, we'll put some other uh, links to, I think, some other articles that you referred to in that as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I wrote an article for Ludagogi uh, magazine, which started up last, uh, in February uh, about... Um, how Lego Serious Play works. So that's, that's usually a good starting point. Yep. And have you gotten some positive feedback from that? Yeah. Um, I think it, it's a fairly simple uh, narrative type explanation uh, that people understood. Um, it's unfortunate that where we are at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're sort of relying on face to face and people being very close, <laughs> close yeah. in the room, which. <laughs> It is, yeah. Um, it isn't something you can do over the telephone particularly well. Um, I did run a workshop where one of the participants was in India and everybody else was in the same room in the UK. Um, a, getting bricks to them yeah. was, was, was one issue and making sure they got the right bricks. And, and just having that communication, seeing things on screen is not the same as being in a room where you can, you know, on screen that's fairly flat yeah uh, in the room that really is 3d yeah that, that's that uh the difference between the the two-dimensional picture that we're looking at representing 3d that we're familiar yeah. with in in person yeah i suppose maybe hopefully in the future if uh 3d printing really comes along then you can go right here download this print some off and away we go but <laughs> 
yeah hopefully this is all just a, a temporary sort of thing and yeah you can have a, a bit of a think about uh what we're doing and uh putting a bit of structure and to to know when we're going forward what's the next steps yeah once it's over we can get, get back to business and i think there will be uh great opportunities once we are through this um for for companies to get back together and understand what they want to do yeah yeah i think you know there'll be a bit of a, a shake out and then just sort of really trying to figure out okay um what's the next novel sort of thing or you know which direction do we really need to be moving in and you know how do we deal with the next phase of challenges yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and how do we bring people back together people that haven't seen each other worked with each other for a few months yeah, it's not like going on holiday for a fortnight so yeah yeah <laughs> at least uh when you you're getting back from your your holiday you just sort of have like you know three or four hundred or thousand emails and it's sort of like well everybody's going to be s somewhat in the same boat <laughs> <laughs> and that concludes part one of this interview if you've gotten some value out of this or enjoyed please like or subscribe so you can see other interviews like this one for the next part click here or alternatively here are some other videos that you might be interested in that's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time, when we talk about all things Lego.